Bojo, Dejakwi Nadejnikas, Shawnee, Oklahoma, and Dojbia. Hey, my name is Taisha Zintek. Um, my Potawatomi name is Dejakwi, which means like a crane. I'm from Shawnee, Oklahoma originally, and I work for the Citizen Potawatomi Nation Office of Self-Governance as a Grants and Contracts Coordinator. Um, I have been attending um, powwows with the CPN since I can remember, even before the festival started, whenever the CPN used to have an intertribal powwow, um, and then festival since it started. I have competed at festival for the last five years, um, placing each year. Um, last year I won second place in the women's uh, competition, and then the two years before that I won first place. Um, and then prior to that, in 2003, I was the CPN um, Intertribal Pow Wow Princess. So Grand Entry is sort of the, the kickoff of the Pow Wow portion of our Family Reunion Festival. And during that time, you'll see all of the dancers. So when you stand, you are standing with the dancers and you are honoring this, um, this practice that has gone back so many years. You're honoring their regalia, you're honoring their families. Um, and you're honoring the fact that they're doing these dances that have been that their ancestors did so many years ago. Um, during Grand Entry, you'll also have um, you'll also have other songs like the flag song when we honor our veterans and our fallen warriors. So all of these things just come down to a basic a basic show of respect. And so similar to the way you might stand when the national anthem is sung, um, you stand as we do the grand entry to honor um, what this means culturally for us. Um, I think for, for any powwow and for the Family Re Reunion Festival, um, powwow etiquette really just comes down to respect for the arena and respect for the, for the dancers and the practice of dance. So the mistakes that I've seen usually just come down to um, a misunderstanding or you know um, just lack of knowledge on how to show that kind of respect. Uh, some of the things that are, are, are good to do um, are to just dress like you would for any sacred activity. You, you wouldn't wear a swimsuit or spaghetti straps or sandals for a sacred activity with your church or something like that. So in the same way, you wouldn't enter the arena um, exposed like that. If you have regalia, you should always wear it. But if you don't, that's OK. Just wear long pants and cover your shoulders if you're a female or male um, and just try to keep that idea of respect in your mind at all time. In addition, um, as with all ceremonies and powwows, you always go clockwise in the arena. So you'll enter to your left and even as you're exiting, even if it's not always the shortest way to to get in to, the, to where you're going, you always go in that in that direction, um, in that circular motion. Um, something else that's important to remember is that um, that dancers take a lot of pride in their regalia, and it means a lot to them. And so you want to respect them and not treat them as if they were an exhibit in a museum or at the zoo or anything like that. So if you're going to take a picture of them outside of the arena, you you ask them. You don't just walk up and take a picture. Um, they may uh, culturally not want you to take a picture, so it's a good idea to ask, um, but they may not mind. It's just, it's just, again, it's just a show of respect. Regalia is a very special personal thing. You'll never see two regalia, regalia that are exactly the same. Um, they have been pieced together over time, um, several pieces of jewelry and feathers and um, just different items of the regalia. Um, have been sort of accumulated or made or gift, been gifted to the person over time. Um, so you don't know what those meanings are to somebody um, or what special significance they hold for that person. So just as you wouldn't, you know, touch someone's wedding ring <laughs> without their permission, you wouldn't touch something like regalia that's very important or special to that person. You want to treat it with respect because you know that they've spent They've invested a lot of time and effort and meaning into those pieces and you want to respect that. I think that it's important to know these things because if you if you know this and you can show it, you can lead by example. So, you know, rather than there being a list of rules posted that don't do this and don't do this and you never knowing the meaning behind the reasons you're doing this, you can understand 
why we do these th things this way. And you can lead by example so that your relatives and your children and um, just those around you can see the way to behave and the way to respect this event and this arena and this um, activity. I've had several people tell me over time that um, one of the reasons that they that they don't dance is because they don't have regalia and they think that it's prohibitively expensive for them to get regalia. Um, and while that's understandable and regalia certainly isn't cheap, just like most special things that we that we own, um, I don't think that it's prohibitive for anybody. If it's something that you are, that's important to you, um, you can do piece by piece. You don't usually purchase regalia wholesale, you know, you. You, you might start with your shawl, and then the next year you add your skirt, and the next year you add your shirt, and you add beadwork as you go along, and maybe you learn how to make some of it yourself so the cost goes down. So um, there are several artisans here at the CPN who work in this and work, could work with you to learn how to do it yourself or to help you create your regalia. So I don't think it's out of reach for anybody, and it's certainly um, something worth doing.